be upstanding. Well, good afternoon, everybody. A very, very warm welcome uh, to you from uh, Grosvenor Church, which is where we are. My name's Tim. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. And we're here, of course, for this very beautiful occasion. Everybody made it. No one was snowed in, which was good. And we're here to celebrate the marriage of Chris and Rachel. So let's remain standing, and we're going to sing together, Be Thou My Vision.
Let's just pray together. Father God, we welcome you here. And Lord, we thank you that we can gather on just such a special occasion. And we just thank you for your presence here with us. Father, we just want to say right from the outset today that we want your name to be glorified. Father, we want your name to be lifted high. And we thank you that we can come together and celebrate this union. And we just pray that you would be in the centre of it all. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we are here together in God's presence. And before you as a congregation to unite in marriage, Chris and Rachel, to ask for God's blessing on them and to share in their joy. And on this special day to pray for them as they join their lives together before God. We remind ourselves that marriage was created by God and in a wonderful way it signifies the union and love between our amazing saviour Jesus and his bride, the church. It's not to be entered into lightly but reverently and in fear of God. That is why a Christian marriage takes on a spiritual as well as a civil dimension. Chris and Rachel are here committing their lives to each other, but they are also asking God to be an integral part of their future together. It was always God's plan that two people should live together as man and wife, being a help and comfort to each other, both in the good times and the bad. Into this special relationship, Chris and Rachel are joined together to belong to each other and to begin a new life together. So, before we go any further, firstly, I'm required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why this beautiful couple may not lawfully marry, and if so, to declare it now. Okay, moving swiftly on. And who gives this woman to be married to this man? Okay, well then let's begin. Do you want to come a little bit closer? <clears throat> Chris, please repeat after me. I do solemnly declare, I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful reason <laughs> but I know not of any lawful reason why I, Christopher William Byram, I, Christopher William Byram, may not be joined in marriage, may not be joined in marriage to Rachel Jane West. To Rachel Jane West. Rachel, I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful reason. That I know not of any lawful reason. Why I, Rachel Jane West. Why I, Rachel Jane West, may not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage to Christopher William Byram. To Christopher William Byram. So far, so good. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Chris, will you have Rachel to be your lawful wife, to live with her after God's law in the holy estate of marriage? Will you love her, honour her, and protect her in sickness and in health, and be faithful to her as long as you both shall live or until Jesus returns? I will. And Rachel, will you have Chris to be your lawful husband, to live with him after God's law in the holy estate of marriage? Will you love him, honour him and cherish him in sickness and in health and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live or until Jesus returns? I will. And congregation, this bit involves you. <clears throat> will you, who have witnessed these promises, do all in your power to love, encourage, and support these two persons in their marriage. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Chris, please repeat after me. I, Christopher William Byram. I, Christopher William Byram. Take you, Rachel Jane West. Take you, Rachel Jane West. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. 
to have and to hold from this day forward to have and to hold from this day forward for better for worse for better for worse for richer for poorer for richer for poorer in sickness and in health in sickness and in health to love and to cherish to love and to cherish according to god's holy law according to god's holy law till death separates us till death separates us or until jesus returns or until jesus returns I, Rachel Jane West. I, Rachel Jane West. Take you, Christopher William Byron. Take you, Christopher William Byron. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. According to God's holy plan according to God's holy plan till death separates us till death separates us or until Jesus returns or until Jesus returns best man this is your moment (laughs) in confirmation of this union in the sight of God and as a token of your love Chris, would you now place this ring on Rachel's finger? And please say after me. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. All that I have I share with you. All that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Rachel. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. All that I have I share with you. All that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Now they are no longer two but one. And what God has joined together, let no man part. For as much as Chris and Rachel have taken each other according to the law of this land and have pledged themselves to each other in the presence of God and these witnesses, I declare that they are husband and wife as long as they shall live or until Jesus returns. You may kiss your bride, Chris. (laughs) Okay. All right. Okay, that's enough. Okay, I'm going to ask Nick and Susie uh, to come up. Maybe you guys can turn around. And Nick and Susie are going to come, and they want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for Mm. Rachel and Chris. Lord, Mm. thank you for their marriage today. And Lord, I just remember praying Mm. with Rachel a couple of years ago um, for the the man that she was going to marry and praying that he would come back to God. And I just thank you that Chris did come back to God soon after that, Lord. Mm. And thank you that he's here today and that we're here to see that answer to prayer. And Lord, I just Mm. pray that you'd pour out your spirit on Mm. Chris and Rachel today and Mm. every day in their marriage. Mm. Lord, I just pray that they keep you at the centre, Mm. that they would pray together, Mm. that they would keep their eyes on Jesus and that you'd be the centre, Lord. Thank you so much Mm. for their wedding today, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, God has given me um, a, a couple of words for you, and I think these are words that perhaps you need to um, pray about and discuss and think about in the future. And the words are, are reach further, reach further. 
And with that, go beyond. And uh, the Bible says that, that two are better than one. And in a Christian marriage with Jesus at the center, describes it as a, a, a three-stranded cord that cannot be easily broken. So it's within that context, I believe, God is saying to you, reach further, go beyond. Two are better than one. Father, I want to thank you for Chris and Rachel. God, I thank you for your hand upon their lives. I thank you, Jesus, that you have led them together. I thank you that you brought them to this point. And uh, I thank you, God, that a new life begins for them now as, uh, as husband and wife. God, I pray that you would be in the center of their life together every moment from now on. God, I pray there would be a couple who love you deeply and love each other deeply. I pray they would encourage each other and build each other up in love. God, I pray, Father, that you would uh, draw them close together and that as the years go by, their love for each other would grow more and more and their love for you would grow more and more. Father God, I pray that they would have um, intimate relation with you. I pray, Jesus, that they would uh, receive blessings from you each and every day. And I pray, God, that they would be a great blessing to others. Lord, I thank you for the blessing that they already have been to others in their lives to this point. And uh, Jesus, I pray that together they would reach beyond and go further and the blessing flowing through them to others would be even greater. God, we ask that you would pour your spirit out on this precious couple and lead them onwards to many years of happy marriage and uh, growing closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's great. Thank you. Why don't we all stand? We're going to have a time of worship together. I'm going to hand over to Amy and the team. You might want to go and stay over there and worship.
Please take your seats. Now we're going to have a reading uh, read by Natalie Oatway and Miriam Parkman. Um, It's Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11, imitating Christ's humility. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. While uh, waiting to register at a hotel, I overheard a couple ahead of me asking for a room with a king, queen, or double bed. The receptionist apologized and said that the only rooms available had twin beds. Disappointed, the man remarked, I don't know, we've been sharing the same bed for 50 years. Could you possibly put them close together? That was the wife, actually. The wife asked. Several people nearby smiled, and someone commented, how romantic. Then the woman finished her request with, because if he snores, I want to be able to be close enough to punch him. (laughs) Now, uh, being a slight snorer myself, um, I really, uh, that resonated with me. And uh, I love reading stories about couples um, who are in a place where they've been married for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And, um, and it's lovely, and, and that might be you here this morning, and, and we want to celebrate that. It's lovely hearing the stories of, uh, of their journeys through marriage. And uh, you get the sense that life has not always been easy. There's been ups and downs, highs and lows, that they've come, uh, managed to come across or get across many differences in their outlooks on life and uh, the things that are important to them. And life hasn't been plain sailing, yet they are still together, snoring and all. Look at my wife over there, who's saying, yes, I know all about that. And, uh, and I take great comfort that from that, albeit just 20 years into marriage. I know it's hard to believe But back in the day when I got married, you were allowed to marry at 10. Um, Everything seems to be a little bit more throwaway these days. Uh, And everything seems to wear out that a little bit quicker. I don't know if you've been finding this. Um, Take TVs, for example. Uh, Do you remember those cathode ray tube televisions? Put your hands up if you had one of them. Just going to show the age. I know there's more of you. Um, A good sturdy set from a respectable manager, um, manufacturer could easily last 20 years, whereas nowadays the average household updates their TV every four to five years, some quicker than that. So Rach, we are definitely due a new TV. And interestingly, quite often that's not because they've broken, uh, it's just because something better has come along. Uh, I've got a friend who's a TV engineer, and... um, He's old school. He uh, grew up fixing TVs. When something broke, he would be there to fix it. But he's had to diversify now because, unsurprisingly, he really doesn't have much work coming in. 
Because people don't fix TVs anymore, they go and buy a new one, and it's the same with washing machines. I had that interesting conversation with my mother just the other day about how washing machines used to last 20 years and now they don't. And I've got a friend, Vern, some of you will know, an old boy called Vern, and uh, he was devastated when his Citroen, which was about 15, 20 years old, um, developed a, an electrical fault. Mechanically, the car was perfect, but because of the electrical fault, it would have cost £2,000 to, to, uh, to fix it, and it wouldn't have passed the MOT. So it pained him. It pained him to have to buy a new car, even though mechanically there was nothing wrong with the car. And it's kind of systematic of our society today that things seem that bit more disposable, and we throw away that a little bit easier. And I guess that's indicative of marriage in some ways as we look at society and some of the attitudes to marriage. But that was never God's plan. The reality of the blueprint of marriage that God created was that it was designed to stand the test of time. It was designed for a man and a woman to be joined together. And it was designed to have the tolerance to withstand huge pressures and weights. Marriage was designed by God to be strong enough to weather the terrible storms that sometimes it faces, and even designed to be robust enough to be fixed when everything seems broken. So the blueprint of marriage isn't faulty. God's design is perfect. But actually, we're the, one that, we're the ones that sometimes struggle you know, Chris and Rachel, believe it or not, there may be a time in your marriage when you argue together. I get the impression you haven't yet. Oh, a little bit, okay. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit. There may be times where you find yourself really frustrated through miscommunication. Um, you may find the differences between yourselves incredibly infuriating. You know, you're going to be amazed at how different you actually are. You know, but that is how God has designed it and put you together. That through this marriage together, even if it takes a lifetime, you'll get to the point where you celebrate more the differences rather than trying to conform each other to be the same as you. You know, talking about things that go wrong, uh, and especially in marriage, uh, I've shared this with a few times, but it's interesting when it comes to rectifying things when, go, when they go wrong, um, I used to work for Vodafone in my past life for about 17 years. And in our training and customer service, it was an interesting thing that they, they taught us. And that is actually, if you put something right that's gone wrong with a customer, and you put it right really well, the brand or the, uh, the, the company loyalty from that customer is stronger than if nothing had ever gone wrong in the first place. I find that really interesting. The customers that just expected everything to be right and to be done perfectly really had no kind of loyalty to you because the next deal that they came up with with another company, they would just go and try something new. But for the customers where something had often gone wrong, I say often, had sometimes gone wrong, um, and you managed to put it right really well, they would stick with you and be loyal. And that's the same with marriage. Believe it or not, there may be times where things go wrong. But it's not about those things. It's about how you react and you respond to put things right when you mess up. Uh, I remember chatting to Chris when he first arrived at Grosvenor. Do you remember this conversation? <laughs> Vaguely. Um, I said, oh, it's just really nice to meet you. I don't recognize you. No, I'm, I'm new here. I said, oh, I asked a very straightforward question. I said, why are you here? And, um, and this was his words. Now, I'm not saying this with verbatim because it was a little while ago, but this is how I remember it. Well, if I'm really honest, I'm hoping to find my wife here. <laughs> do you remember it now? Yeah. Um, and didn't the boy do good? Um, maybe with the audacity to punch a long way above his weight. Um, <clears throat> breathtakingly audacious. Um, but ultimately... It paid off. All joking aside, you know, I'm sure um, whether you're new to meeting Chris or new to meeting Rachel, you would agree that they are a fantastic couple. And um, we're delighted that you guys are together. And it's no surprise that you met in a church because I know 
but actually central um, to your, your reason for living and how you live your lives is not church, but it's your faith. You see, I'm sure you know Rachel and Chris are both Christians. And that's very different to just going to church. And it needs to be made, that distinction needs to be made. Because actually, if you know them, you've probably seen their faith in action. They're not just nice people, but there is something very different about the way that they live, live their lives. It goes far beyond religiously just going to church every day. And I know that you've got something very much in common through your faith and your belief in Jesus, but also your relationship with him. And I love the verses that they chose to use. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, and I know that that's central to both Rachel and Chris, that they are united with Christ. Um, Nick talked about this three-strand cord that's not easily broken. Actually, it's from Ecclesiastes, and it says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And actually, that third strand, Nick talked about inviting God into their life, into their marriage. And I know that's what they've both done. That third strand, I could have gone down some mother-in-law jokes there, but I didn't. The third strand isn't the mother-in-law. Although you've both got amazing mother-in-laws. Chris, you told me that. (laughs) But that third strand is, is... is Jesus. It's a person. So not only are you connected to a body, a church, where you get that love and support, but also you're very much connected with the author, the foundation or the founder of marriage. And so you've got this great head start as you head into marriage, that you actually know the creator who made the blueprint for marriage. And so my encouragement to you, unsurprisingly, is to make sure that Jesus stays in the center. Uh, and you know, that might seem obvious, but for, for, for my marriage, when, when we first got married, you know, we didn't get that right. And um, you know, that made things very difficult. And I had this assumption that because I was a Christian, <clears throat> um, that actually our marriage would just be great because we were both Christians. I underestimated how much we both needed to work at marriage, invest in marriage, make sacrifices for that marriage. So I want to encourage you, just like those TVs and the washing machines, um, actually, they just need maintenance. I recommend a marriage MOT. I recommend that for anybody here who's been married for a little while to actually go back and do some more study and go on a course and look at your marriage and ways in which you can improve it, just to do an MOT to make sure things are okay. To continue to live by the Bible, that passage you chose was amazing. If we look at just very quickly some of those things, being tender and compassionate, having the same love, being of one spirit, doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, valuing each other above yourselves and not looking to your own interests but to the interests of others. Really, you could go a little wrong by following that, could you? It's an amazing passage. And our guide and our model is Jesus. And I know that it wouldn't be right for me not to mention this invitation. That actually when you look at the lives of Rachel and Chris and maybe other Christians that you've come into contact with and you recognize that there's something different about them. It's not just because they're nice people, even though they are. There's a relationship they have with Jesus. They believe that Jesus died on the cross for them that the things they've done wrong in their, in their lives have been washed away and paid for so that they can come close to this creator of this universe and our world and have relationship and union with him. And actually, they come to church not because they just love hanging out with people like me, which I understand, um, but they come to church because actually they come to worship. And for some of you, that might have been a bit weird today, singing three songs in a row. Uh, and that's the difference between singing songs and actually be worshipping the person and the creator of God who they follow. And so I really want to encourage you over these next couple of years with Rachel and Chris, invite yourself around to their house for dinner. (laughs) That's okay, isn't it? 
Because Rachel and Chris were really keen for people that maybe have not got that faith and that trust and that hope and the assurance and the peace and that sense of love and hope that comes from being in a relationship with Jesus. They were very keen for you to hear about it. But actually, do you know what? Rather than me telling you my story, I know they're very keen for you to know about their story and for them to give a reason for this relationship that they have, but also this hope that they have. So invite us, give them a week, okay? Give them a week. Chris, give them two weeks, okay? And then invite yourself around and ask them about their faith because seriously, it's life-changing and it's the most important thing you will ever find out about while you're on this earth. Just to finish with, I read this lovely quote. A successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. And that's my prayer for you as you go into this marriage together. We believe that God is going to use you as a couple in amazing ways. We're excited about that. But also, um, I believe that you're going to be falling in love with each other time and time again as you walk through the rest of your lives together. Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? <clears throat> Father God, we just thank you for this this marriage, we thank you for this couple that we can see your hand on their lives, how you have brought them together. We recognize that. And we recognize that as they start this life together, you've got plans and purposes to use them as a team that's even stronger together. Lord, I pray for your protection over them. Lord, I pray that the vows that they said before you and us as witnesses will ring true for richer, for poorer in sickness and in health, for better or for worse. I just pray that they will keep you in the center of their lives, in their marriage. They will honor each other above themselves and that you will keep them safe and protect them as they reach out to the people around them that need the same hope that they found. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're gonna, you're going to sign the register and uh, Amy's going to play some music. So those involved in that... If you could do that now.
Thank you, Amy. That was, that was beautiful. Thank you. And the band as well, who have led us so beautifully in worship as well this, this afternoon. Thank you so much. We're going to stand together and we're going to sing How Great Thou Art.
Well, that's the end of our service. Um, But just to say that refreshments are now being served in the Richmond Lounge, so don't rush off. Uh, There is also going to be the cutting of the cake, so that we can all witness that. So I think we're there. I think the only thing to do now is for you to join me in receiving the newly married husband and wife team, Mr. and Mrs. Byram. (laughs) 